we moved to, moved to Perth in 1968, and um, a few years later I got a guitar, and so this is songs I gravitated to and, and learned. It doesn't actually surprise me that you grew up in Perth with all the sunshine and the beaches yeah. and the surfing culture. I mean, that's really quite extraordinary that it would manifest itself in your creativity like that. It's like that, isn't it? I mean, I, we had to leave Perth for that to happen. Yes, anyway. <laughs> I had to leave Perth. And you went to Melbourne? No, I went to Sydney. I lived in Sydney, Sydney now. No, actually, I went to England first for a year, and then uh, I starved. And then I came back to Perth. Did well for a while, and I came to Sydney just for... I was on a tour, and I came here. I'll just stay for a few weeks, and that was 20 years ago, and I'm still here. Well, why don't we hear a little bit more music, shall we? I think that would be good, because that's... When someone comes in with a guitar, that's what you want to yeah, hear. Yeah, I'll just play a little, a little short piece. It's, this one's called 1963. Uh-huh. So it's only a short piece, but I'll play it just to give you a vibe for it. I got the vibe for it. Yeah. It's good. So, what next for Summer Sounds? Do you think that this one's going to pertain and last and sustain? I hope so. I think the thing is, uh, with music at the moment, it's, it seems to be a dead spot for music and new music. So hopefully what I'm doing sounds fresh and exciting still. So I'm just trying to you know, bring it to a new audience. That's lovely. It is 20 minutes past nine o'clock. Your guest in the studio is Martin Celia, guitarist in the Atlantics and solo artist in his own right. His genre is surf rock. Libby Gore. Call now on 1300 222 774 or SMS 0437 774 774. Libby Gore. Libby Gore on 774 ABC Melbourne and ABC Victoria. Martin Cilia is your guest in the studio. He's a, gu a guitarist in the Atlantics and his genre is surf rock. You know who I know would be loving this segment is Paul Clark, who made Bombora. He also made Wide Open Road, you know. And there is a kind of nostalgia coming back, isn't there, about, I don't know, 60s, 70s Aussie culture, Generation X culture of the surfing, that tail end of the baby boomers, but the yeah. surfing and the cars and Australian life, I guess, when we were... Growing up. Exactly. I thought Paul represented that very well in his... Do you like Bombora? Yeah, I thought he did a really good job on that one. Yeah. Captured the essence of the moment. It's a dry kind of Tim Winton-esque feeling, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's beautiful. If you've got any thoughts, if you want to join the conversation, my text messages don't seem to be changing, so I don't know whether it's still working. 0437 774 774. Send us a text and see if it, the technology is still with us. 0437 774 774. Or call. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to talk surf rock, Bombora, surfing memories, whether it be at Torquay, Bells Beach, whether it be um, off the New South Wales coast, or indeed you might have been surfing in Cottesloe. That's right. Uh, zero, uh, one three hundred triple two seven seven four is the number. One three hundred triple two seven seven four. We'd love your surf rock memories. No. It would help if I did that. Up comes Jason. Hello, Jason. How are you going, Libby? Yeah, good, thank you. That's good. Um, the Atlantics, I, my dad was a drummer um, in, a, in a band you know, when I was a kid. And, um, yeah, the, uh, the Atlantics was a regular um, LP um, rotation in, in, at home. So I've kind of grown up on the Atlantics. Does it sound good to hear that guitar in the studio? It sounded awesome, actually. I'd love to be able to see these guys live, so I think I'm going to have to find out where they're playing next and check them out. What did your dad do? Was he did, was did, was he a surfer or? Um, he, well, when he moved from England to Australia in the early '60s, he was a guitarist, um, and then he he was um, I, I believe when he was a kid, he was in the, in the Navy cadets and he used to do drumming, so. Um, yeah, later on, when, when I knew that he played music, he was a drummer. So he had his own, still got his own 
Thanks for calling in, Jase. Thank you. Good to talk to you. See, how many people came out from England? Exactly. Who were guitarists? I mean, that was Harvey James's story yet again. Yep, ten dollar ticket. Ten dollar ticket. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Can't go wrong. All around the same time. Giorgio. Hello, Giorgio yes. from Melbourne. Hello. Yes. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good. Very good. I love your broadcasting. It's always very, very good to listen to Excellent. and very relaxing. Uh, plenty of thought you give us all the time I'm glad <laughs> what did now, you uh, yes surfing but it's more much uh, it's more much more about uh, memory surfing like yeah. hearing hearing that block uh, playing guitar with that music and and sounds maybe maybe going back to Sergio Leone spaghetti westerns <gasps> mo in moments you know when there is a Clint Eastwood there in the in the middle of nowhere waiting for whoever is you not know, coming up and that music it's, it really fits. It's the Ennio Matacone kind of feel, isn't it? And uh, in fact, in Melbourne, the Spaghetti Western Orchestra, which is uh, headed up by Graham Lake, Bill Lake's brother, and uh, Patrick Cronin, who was the Cabbage Brothers, played the trumpet in the Cabbage Brothers, they put together the Spaghetti Western Orchestra, and they do all the Ennio Matacone music, which is it is it does have a similar ilk in terms of tone, not necessarily sound with the amplification, but it's got that kind of foreboding or... What is it? It's the minor notes that make it sound... You would say that made it sound like it was clean and fresh with the air. Yeah, it's most of the minor notes. It's the, the, it's, you can almost smell it. Yeah, smell do it. The, smell the... Uh, the it's that, sort of it's like the... Um, that's what it is, isn't it? You're going to do it. The good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, it's got that lonely sound. Lonely, lonely. yeah. So sort of like you're paddling. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Different way of putting it, but yeah. Beautiful. Let's take a line, a phone call from Grover in Belgrave. Hey, Grover. Hi. Um, how you doing? You're from Belgrave. Oh, Harvey yeah. James is with us tonight in the studio. That's where he lived. Is that right? Yeah, wow. he must be visiting, you know, in a spiritual sense. Hello, Grover. Well... <laughs> I've got a I've got a question for you, guest. I've been in and out in the kitchen, so I didn't catch his name. But um, I heard him mention uh, digital reverb and analog reverb, and I'm curious um, what unit he's using, and also what amp he's um, playing through tonight. Mm, that's a good technical question. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. That's a how we that's a surf rock question. That's a surf rock question. Okay. I'm travelling light tonight. I've actually got another gig later on this evening. And my main rig is set up there. But so just for convenience, I brought along my white Stratocaster, which is a 1961 Stratocaster. And I've got a, a, a little tweed Fender Biberlux amp from 1959. And, wow. uh, and I've got a little digital Fender reverb pedal, which I don't normally use. I've only used it for convenience, like tonight, I normally use a, use a Fender Reverb tank from the early 60s, but that's set oh, up for the other gigs, so... So you have to actually use equipment of the time to get the sound, you reckon? I think it helps. It's just modern things sound modern. Music, is, is, it captures a period of time, and technology uh, helps with that equation. If you can tell of a song, oh, that, you can hear a recording, oh, that was recorded in the 60s, or well, that was recorded in the 80s. Technology is part of the sound that you hear and we associate with. So I, when I do my recordings or play live, I try to use equipment from pre-1964. Ah, to get the feeling. And it really helps, yeah. I can imagine it would. There you go, Grover. I hope that satisfies you, the answer. Here's Pete from King Lake. Hi, Pete. Oh, hi there. How are you going? Oh, look, you've, you've rekindled a few memories, a few good memories. Look, the first record that one of my friends had was the Bombora one. Mm. And uh, I remember I never actually got it myself until I found it at a junk shop a few years ago, the vinyl one. Uh, played it once and I, oh, yeah, OK, check it out some other time in the future. The other thing was, the uh, could you tell us more about the, um, the Fender, Leo Fender's uh, G&L guitars? Ye oh, Pete sent that. that I just I got your text message. More about the Leo G&L Fender guitar. Yeah, yeah, I picked up one the other week and I just 
that changed my uh, view on what a guitar should feel like as an interceptor model, but also um, did Fender make, or what guitar would a Fender made a humbucker pickup for? I've got one on a guitar, but it's a Fender pickup humbucker. I can't find the guitar it came from. But uh, the other thing, look, I'll have to throw this one in while I'm talking to you, though. Uh, I bumped into Muddy Waters one night. Um, the whole band in the Melbourne Town Hall um, hallway when I was... Uh, my dad was the electrician there, and I'd been taken in there as a... You know, try and uh, give me something... A, a, um, a future. <laughs> and Muddy Waters and his band came marching along the hallway, all carrying their own fenders and amps and everything and there was no roadies and it was the most wonderful memory I've had from the whole music world I think that and later on that night um, I was up in the spot box shining the spotlight on muddy waters mm. that's my claim to fame that's, anyway that's a good claim well, can, can you fill us in on the GNL interceptor well, I'm not really clued up on GNL guitars from what I know is they came in in the 80s Leo Fender started a new company after Music Man uh, from what I've heard, they're quite good. Guitar, Australian guitar player Phil Emanuel. I've seen Phil play one. Okay. And they sounded great when he played them. Um, I've, I've, I've never owned one, uh, so I don't really know. You know um, the classic boat neck. Did Leo Fender invent that boat neck? I think was, he was one of the first people to do that, yes. Yeah, it was really solid feeling to it. And, just, and it was in tune after being stored under somebody's bed for a year, I think. Yeah, I think, Le well, the thing about Leo Fender, he got it right the first time back in the early 50s. Yeah. Thanks for your call, Pete. Okay, that's, that's good. I hope I've put into the um, evening. You have. You have contributed to the evening. I do like a good bit of guitar talk. <laughs> it's, a, it's a particular language, isn't it? It is. It's um, guitar geek stuff. Yeah. Uh, I got a text message from Pete saying, uh, don't forget Red Simons was a £10 pom who wasn't too bad with the guitar too. He did well. He did very well. He was in a good band. One of my favourite Australian bands. Mm. It is... Uh, well, I think we'll get another song from you, young man. All right. We will. But first of all, uh, we're going to talk with Rod Quinn very shortly. He's going to tell you what's on the nightlife. But I should let you know that it's 9.30. I want you all to sit back and imagine that you're out having a paddle, maybe having a sunbake on a rock, or, or, or just sitting in one of those um, slatted chairs in the faded gelati colours, um, feeling the sunshine on you and having a little think to yourself with a cool breeze blowing please do that because in a moment you're going to enjoy a little bit more of martin celia who's the guitarist in the atlantic solo artist in surf rock here's your treat tonight on 774 abc melbourne and abc across victoria libby gore on 774 abc melbourne and abc victoria one three hundred triple two seven seven four. if you want to talk guitars surf rock amps all that kind of stuff that blokes like to talk about from the safety of their garage or their shed on a Friday night. Or indeed, if there is someone wanting to buy someone something for Christmas, you could ask a question. one three hundred triple two seven seven four, 222 or text 0437 774 774. Paul says, thanks, by the way, they've closed East Link. Well, that's why, Paul, because there's been a crash. Um, Martin? Yes. What are you going to play for us now to really give us that, I don't know, that surf rocky sun, mm. sunshine on my skin kind of feeling? You might recognise this. I'll do a slightly uh, cruisy version of this next song, but most people will recognise it. Okay. A nice Friday night cruisy version.
it's just, motor tool? I, I know, I, it, it's familiar in my head. That's my Friday night version of Bombora. Bom oh, that was Bombora. It's slightly different, no thundering drums. It's beautiful. Thank you. I know that song. It's before my time, but mm. I know that song. Yeah, it's good it's before your time. It's an Australian classic. Here, Jim wants to speak with you. Hello, Jim. Yeah, hi, guys. Um, gee, that's given me an idea to rip that song off you guys and play it, play it uh, solo. It's great. That, that Bombora. Um, I'm a uh, bit of an old retread music too, and um, I've, a, I've got a whole bunch of Fenders at home. Um, I wear an old 64 L-series Strat and a uh, 68 Tele. But as far as I know, the um, the main humbucker used in Fenders that were pr actually produced by Fenders uh, was came out of the Tele Customs. They had a humbucker uh, on a neck pickup at a... At a um, you know, the normal single coil down the back of the bridge. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think that would be around 1972-ish. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're normally black, black on black. Yeah, that sounds about deck. right. And I remember in the day, um, it was about when I started buying Fenders around about that time, and uh, I remember a few guys had them, and they were, weren't known for their great sound. I've got yeah, to say, well, in the day. Well, it's all the noise. Like, you had to stand a certain way in front of your aunt because of the single coil pickups. Yes. And, um... You know, even with, oh, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bass player by trade. I've got a J bass and a, and a P bass. Fender, of course, all 60s ones. Um, can't go wrong with those. No, 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 can't go wrong with But my, oh, I bought that for 500 bucks mm. in 1970. And, well, you know what an L series would be worth now. What? Um, but it, it, I wanted to put that in the coffin with it when they planned me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Jim, for calling I love in. Them. Thanks for calling in. Um, Martin's got to get to a gig, so we really do have to say thank you so much for yeah, coming so in. Yeah, to the uh, to the gig now. You certainly do. So we don't want to make you late for that. But um, thank you so much for coming in thank and giving us a bit Pleasure. of surf rock. It's taken me to Torquay. Ooh, I like it. You're talking Torquay in Victoria, mm. not Torquay in Devon. No, Torquay <laughs> in Victoria. I'm thinking, I actually was thinking, have I been to Torquay recently on a sunny day? And I, I haven't. Oh, well, summer's coming it's up. Windy. It's windy. It's going to be beautiful. There's still time. It's going to be lovely. Thank you so much, Martin Thank you, Celia, for coming in. <laughs> so Martin uh, has got gigs in uh, Melbourne and uh, and on the Gold Coast, but that doesn't concern you at ABC and 774 Sydney. and in Sydney. This is 774 ABC Melbourne and ABC across Victoria.